I'm Karen Mae Melton with Care Conscious, and I'm back here with Dr. Ann Glass from the Institute of Gerontology at UGA. Uh, before, Dr. Glass was talking to us about the options for in-home care providers, and now we're going to get into more of the nitty-gritty uh, about in-home care providers. And specifically, Dr. Glass, what really makes up a good in-home care provider? Well, I actually was involved in a study where we talked to clients and their family members about that very question. Okay. Uh, people who were receiving care through a Medicaid personal care waiver program. And the kind of things that they talked about, number one was you want somebody who's honest and trustworthy because sure. you're letting a stranger into your house. Mm -hmm. So that's a natural. And that's scary. I mean, it you is really a little are. scary. You're bringing a complete stranger into your house and entrusting the care of your loved one. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone who's reliable, who shows up on time and stays the time they're supposed to be there is important because mm -hmm. that was a big issue for caregivers if they aid didn't show up and they that made them late to work or they had to find a substitute to come in. Sure. It's a big problem. Um, having a consistent aid is also preferable. When you say consistent, what do you mean? Well, the same one of person? our respondents said it this way that having too many aids was like dating too many men. <laughs> because they do provide pretty intimate care mm -hmm. and you don't want a whole lot of strangers coming in and doing okay. that. And again, a good aide is one who does provide the care in the way that the client wants it. You know, they get to know how you want things done and they do them that way. They focus on the client. Um, they're pleasant, easy to get along with and have good training. Okay, very good. Well, geez, that's easy enough, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If only it was. <laughs> yeah, it's really not that cut and dry. Huh? No, it's not always easy to find an aid. Um, you may be able to go through an agency, or you you may hear about people or be trying to hire somebody mm -hmm. on the on the outside market. But just because you get somebody in place doesn't mean that it ends there. You know, you can't just sit down and relax because you, you need to continue to monitor how things are going. Okay. You need to be prepared that maybe this aid is not a good match with your family member or there's turnover, you know, you think you got it all good to go and, and then there's turnover and somebody leaves and you've got to start all over again. Okay, so the family caregivers really need to know that it's not the end of their responsibility. They still have Absolutely. to monitor the situation and be there to fill in if the provider isn't there. That's right. Or be prepared to hire another one. That's absolutely right. Okay, and what if the person that's receiving the care doesn't want somebody else in the home? I mean, I've heard that from so many different family caregivers that uh, the family caregiver really needs the help, but the person doesn't want anybody else in their home. Yeah, then that's a real challenge, and I, I don't have a good answer for that. I think um, you just have to keep trying, and maybe you finally find the right match for your father or mother, somebody that gets along with them, understands how to how to work with them, how to get them to do what they need to do. Okay. So it's just a matter of trial and error, I guess, and, and being patient and keep okay. working at it. And also, perhaps if you tell the older person that this is what it what it necessary for them to be able to stay at home, mm -hmm. they've got to work with you on having an aide come in. Okay. So they as a way to stay at home, like a mutual buy-in. Mm -hmm. They they want to be home, then these are the things. This that is have what to has happen. to happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I know on our site, too, we have a list of questions that family caregivers can use when they're interviewing uh, in-home care professionals, and that will probably help as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And uh, family caregivers can just log on to Care Conscious and, and look for that list and that print it out or even email it to other family members or friends. Um, what if the family caregiver suspects that uh, there is abuse going on? Well, that's, again, why you really need to keep monitoring and keep visiting and keep mm -hmm. an eye on how things are going and if the person, the aide, is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, signs that they're not are, mm -hmm. would include if your family member doesn't appear to you know, be in clean clothes or have their hair washed and things like right. that. Um, bruises would be another sign. If your family member appears kind of scared mm -hmm. when the aide shows up, then that's not a good sign. Right. You want to have somebody that they feel comfortable with. Okay. And if there is abuse going on, what can the family caregiver do? Where can they go? Well, they need to report it to the agency if there's an agency involved sure. or to Adult Protective Services. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And thanks for watching. Thank you.